Hello and welcome to Vegetable Gardening 101. My name is Carol Waters. I'm with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach in West Pottawatomie and I serve as County Director. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about vegetable gardening, the very, very basics for those who are interested in getting started. We will also have further programming later on down the, in the spring to get into more detail. But for today, we're just talking about the basics for anyone just starting vegetable gardening. So the first thing we want to talk about in vegetable gardening is what is your goal for your garden? And this is a very personal question. Um, it might be, I just want to have fresh tomatoes all summer. I don't want to grow anything else. I just want to grow tomatoes. It may be to have a variety of produce all summer for you and your household. You may want to grow specific crops to preserve, whether that be you may just love beets and you want to make beet jelly and that's all you want to grow. That's perfectly fine. Just have an idea. And maybe it's you want to have enough for yourself and some left over to donate to local pantries. Whatever your decision is, it's just have a goal when you start out. A lot of people start with, I just want to garden and I want to garden the way my grandmother did when I was growing up. You may not enjoy that kind of gardening. So really think about what do you want to grow, why you want to grow it, because the more attached to it you are, the more successful you're going to be. So the first thing you need to think about when you want to start gardening is site selection. And this is going to be the first question I ask somebody who says, hey, I want to go grow a garden. I'm going to say, okay, tell me about your site. Things I'm going to ask, what kind of sunlight does it get? The reason I ask this, sunlight is the most important thing that you cannot manipulate. <laughs> sunlight for a garden is crucial. You need at least six hours of full sunlight a day. So when you're looking at your backyard, your balcony, a deck that you might have, just depending on the space you have, look at the sunlight and really look at it with a critical eye. If you're getting a few hours of sunlight in, this morning, in the morning and the afternoon is full shade, you may have to rethink of where you're gardening and where that's going to be at. You may have to look off-site if you have a, a lot that's fully shaded. So look at sunlight as a crucial component. The next thing we're going to talk about is soil type, and we'll talk a little bit more about soils in a minute. Overall, Iowa soils are ideally suited for gardening, which is great. But as you can see in the picture, sometimes the soil type is amended. We, we make raised beds, we may have container gardening, and those are a little bit different soil types. So we'll talk more about soil. You also want to look at the trees in your backyard or wherever you're planning to grow your garden. Trees can help or hinder. If trees are off to the side and never shade the garden, that is the perfect spot for the tree and the garden. If the spot you ideally want, you want to grow tomatoes, but it's going to be near a walnut tree. Walnut trees have a chemical that they release through their roots to combat competition. And it does kill nightshades, which tomato is a nightshade. So you want to think about the trees, where they're at, are they shading, are they appropriate? You also want to think about the size. A lot of folks come in and say, I want a big garden and I have a really small lot. So you want to make sure that the garden size fits in with what your family needs in a landscape, in your yard. If you have dogs and children and they need play space, and you have a very small lot, your garden's gonna have to be really small. So you really need to think about the bigger picture of your landscape needs, your family needs, and your vegetable needs. Think about your available space, and that goes directly back to size. And then water, I can't say this enough. The closer your garden is to a water source, the easier it is going to be to garden, and the more you're going to enjoy gardening in the long run. I often tell people, put your garden as close to the back door as possible because you can't ignore it there. <laughs> and the caveat to that is also put it as close to the water spigot as you can. Um, if you've ever had to carry water for very long, it gets really old and come July when you're having to water maybe once or twice a day, every day, 
you either have to be a really dedicated to it or really love it and uh, if you're a new gardener that can really kill your spirit fast so I highly encourage you to be somewhere where you're near a water source So I said we were going to talk a little bit about more about soil, and here we are. So soil is made up of four components, minerals, which make up about 45% of your soil, organic matter, which makes is about 5%, and then air and water, and each of those occupy 20 to 30% respectively. So it, that's everything you need in your soil. Iowa soils are extremely well suited for fruits and vegetables. We are incredibly lucky to have great soils to grow plants. Now, the good news and the bad news. The bad news, the best time to till is the fall. So the reasoning there is you want to break up the soil and the freezing and thawing action through the winter will help break up that soil even more for you. It helps the process. However, it's spring, you want to garden, have faith, you can still till now. You can break up the ground, you can go ahead and till, but just wait till it's dry. If you don't wait till it's completely dry, you're going to have compaction issues in your garden that you absolutely don't want and you're going to be fighting your whole time that you have a garden. So wait until it's dry to, before you break ground. For those people who call me and say, I have this piece of ground and the soil's not great, um, the best thing you can do is always incorporate organic matter. Whether that's composted leaves, um, composted manures, and be sure to check that first word, composted manures. You don't want to add in a lot of fresh manure from cattle, from horses, from chickens, wherever you you have that. Um, you really want to make sure it's well composted before you put it in your garden. If you put it in fresh, it often burns the plants later on. Too much nitrogen. So make sure the organic matter that you're using is appropriate, it's been properly composted, and you work it in really well into your soil. So let's talk about garden size, and this is really going to depend on your space available, whether that's at your own property, maybe you're renting a property and your landlord says, yes, I don't mind if you go ahead and tear up the backyard for a garden, maybe it's at a community garden. There's several in the Council Bluffs area that you could rent a spot for the summer. But start with a manageable size, 10 by 10 is a great size to start, that's 100 square feet. You can grow just about everything you'd want in, in that kind of space. But figure out your size based on the vegetables you want to grow. Um, some vegetables you can grow up, so you wanna think vertically. Some vegetables are spreaders. So if you wanna grow just pumpkins in a 10 by 10 foot area, you're only gonna have a couple of hills of pumpkins whether but if you're thinking of green beans then you could grow many more green beans so think about what you want to plant before you uh, put it in the ground and again 10 by 10 great size to start talking a little bit about plant placement, we want to arrange crops in a way that makes planting, watering, cultivating, and harvesting easier. The easier these gardening activities are, because you will be repeating them on a very regular basis, the easier they are, the more you're going to want to care for your garden, you're going to want to spend time in your garden, and it'll be enjoyable for you. We also want to talk a little bit about perennial crops, and those are things like rhubarb or asparagus crops that come up every year without being replanted. You want to plant those along one side where they're not going to be disturbed from year to year. If possible, you want your tall crops on the north side of your garden to avoid shading. Things like corn or if you decide to trellis plants, you want those on the north side of your garden. They'll, they'll, that'll keep it from shading any of your other crops. With plant rotation, we want to talk about why do we rotate crops. And you'll see plant rotation mentioned a lot in the publications that we recommend. We want to rotate crops to prevent a buildup of soil-borne diseases. 
So if you've had a garden and you've planted tomatoes in the same spot for 10 years and the first couple of years you had great crops but you've been wondering why they haven't ever really produced at that level, you might think about moving those tomatoes somewhere else in the garden. Possibly somewhere where you've planted maybe cucurbits like squash or cucumbers or pumpkins. You want to swap those around. We have to rotate families. And that's going to help prevent those soil-borne diseases from building up and it can help curb insect populations from building up. You want to rotate every two to three years. And I encourage you, please keep garden data with your plants. Because if you're like me, you'll think, oh, I'll remember where I planted it last year. But a lot of time passes between the end of harvest and the spring planting. So go ahead and keep that garden data. Vegetable selection. And this goes back to our original discussion, is what is your goal? Keep it simple. Keep it to things that you already know you love, that you'll, your family will eat, or you know is a big winner at the pantry. You want to maybe limit the number of plants or plantings you have this year. And the size of your garden may dictate what you plant. So when I say keep it simple and plant things that you like, a great example for me is green beans. I hate green beans and I know that I'm not going to eat them but I love tomatoes so I, I plant tomatoes and I don't plant green beans it's a personal choice green green beans are super easy to grow and I know I can grow lots of them I don't want to eat them though so we don't grow green beans at our house I would encourage you to take a look at the suggested suggested vegetable varieties for the home garden. It's one of our publications, numbered 607, and later on I'll tell you a little bit more about where to find those publications. Getting more from your space. If you're like me, you may have a small plot. You might want to look at succession planting. If you want tomatoes all summer, you're not going to plant them all on the same day. You're going to plant some wait a week or two, plant a few more, and that way you're guaranteed tomatoes throughout the growing season. You also may want to look at interplanting. Interplanting is an example that we have in the background of this, this screen. You can see a little bit of spinach interspersed with the onions. They require the same nutrients, the same care, and they each take up a different amount of space. So you're maximizing your soil space. And once again, staking or trellising. If you don't have a lot of space, but you really love cucumbers, you might consider growing those on a trellis. You can grow them up and that makes it easier to care for and it keeps the fruit looking better too. Also makes it incredibly easy to pick and harvest. So staking and trellising is a great, great avenue to, to look at. Other types of gardens you might consider, I would highly encourage you to look at your fruits and vegetables in the landscape. You may already have some great beds that you need to plant something else there. Why not a vegetable annual crop instead of a flower? You can see in the background here there's lots of flowers, there's lots of color, but if you look, the green with the red stripe is actually a kale and right behind that is a cabbage growing in the landscape. Super simple, looks ornamental, great to eat and it already uses space you're already utilizing. Not everything has to be a ornamental plant in your landscape. You can also look at small plots and container gardens. Container gardens are great for anyone who has maybe a deck or a balcony that they can use, but maybe not land. When you're looking at container gardens, just remember to use a soilless medium, and that's your potting soils. Garden soils will actually um, clump up in the a pot in a container and become very dense and it's also very very heavy hard for plants to grow in that situation so you want to use a soilless medium it also needs good drainage so make sure that whatever container you're using has drainage holes in the bottom the plants that you would plant in your container garden do need the same sun requirements so Look at your balcony or your space and make sure it's still getting at least six hours of full sun a day. 
and use appropriate plants. We have another publication on growing in container gardens and it also recommends some varieties specific for containers, mostly dwarf plants because you don't want anything quite so big. I'd also be remiss if I didn't talk about growing for donation. Our pantries are always looking for fresh produce and we encourage that. We work very closely with our healthy food access specialist, Judy Dittmer, and we have become a produce donation site at the West Potawatomi Extension Office. All we ask is, one, that you wash your produce with potable water. That means drinking water. Just because you would drink out of your spigot doesn't necessarily make that potable water, so make sure you're actually cleaning with potable water before you bring it to us. We also ask that you use a food grade bucket when harvesting or transporting. And we make this super easy. We have donation buckets at the office and we will give you one. We will gladly give you one if you say that you would like to donate to the pantry system. We'll give you the bucket. When you bring it back full, we give you another bucket. Couldn't be easier. We do ask that you clean produce before donating. And you can donate at the West Potawatomi Extension Office located at 1705 McPherson Avenue. We're in Suite 200. And during the growing season, we typically take produce Monday through Wednesday to take to pantries. But to be honest, we would take it Monday through Friday. So if you have excess produce you want to donate, we'd love to help you out with that. We'll have many resources available on the YouTube site, but if you're interested before we get those posted, we encourage you to look at the Extension Store. Go to store.extension.iastate.edu and this was the screen that you'll see. You'll see a link along the top that says Yard and Garden and if you click on that there is a specific link for vegetable gardening. Tons of resources available. All of them are free. You can download as many as you want. So. If you have other questions about that or you need some help getting those, just call us at the office and we'll be happy to print you a copy. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about some upcoming 2020 gardening programs. 2020 has been a kind of a different year as far as extension programming and with our office being shut down temporarily, we've had to take a lot of our programming online. Our spring garden conference was canceled, but we wanted to make sure that some of those pieces were still captured. So we're so excited that April 6th we'll be doing new and improved, exciting new veggies and flowers from the All-American Selections program. John Porter, who is the urban agriculture educator with Douglas Sarpy and UNL Extension will be our guest speaker and that begins at six o'clock and it'll be online. On April 14th, I will be back talking about trees for the urban landscape. This was a talk again from the Spring Garden Conference. It will be online and it's at six o'clock. All of these programs are going to be free. So we hope that you enjoy them. We hope that it fills a little bit of that need that you were excited about the Spring Garden program, but unfortunately we had to cancel. We wanted to bring it to you anyway. And finally, on April 20th, We'll be doing Sensational Succulents. This was one that was already planned. It was an in-person program. Again, move to online. But it opened up the opportunity to offer it to many more people. So if you're interested on April 20th, April 14th and April 6th are those program dates. They are all free and they're all being recorded so you can access them at any time. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. And if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, please reach out to us. Our phone number is 712-366-7070. And with that, have a great day.